What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. All right, I I love to play with the effects when I'm doing live looping. Welcome. It's Tuesday Muse Day, and uh, today's theme is Happy Holidays. What is a holiday? Stick around and find out. I'll tell you a little bit later. So I have a lot of things for you in today's show. It's packed with goodies, uh, mostly rhythmic stuff. I've got clave stuff, we've got conga rhythms, uh, we're doing polyrhythms a little bit later, we've got reflections of Yanni, we've got a couple events coming up, super excited. Let's go over to the desk and say hello and see who's here. Thanks for joining us, you guys, you know, this, this is live. So let's go be alive with you at the desk, stand by. Oh, that's not something. <laughs> That's not something I want. Okay, stand by. Coming over to the desk. Hey. How's that for transition music? All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, Cornelius is here. Daryl's here. Rebecca. Lacey. Of course, Roseanne is helping keep things together. Sorry I didn't shave. Wow, this, this lens is really in focus. <laughs> you can see the fact that it's been a couple days. Uh, welcome, everybody. I uh, hope you had a good uh, Thanksgiving. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, so I had a request a while back for a Motown rhythm, 
And uh, I thought about where I have that. And I have that in one of the videos that's available to patrons in the courses. And that's the How to Play Congas, or based on the Play Congas DVD, which now has been digitized. And it's living over it in the Patreon uh, area, in the courses area, at our Patreon thing. So I'm just going to play you that video. This is a funk pattern for, for congas. And uh, watch it, and I'll see you on the other side. Here we go. I call this rhythm the funk rhythm. Uh, it's based on kind of that boogaloo funk rhythm from uh, R&B days. Another really useful rhythm you can play in lots of different musical situations. It also, like the calypso rhythm, uses an alternating hand pattern. So I really like this as a kind of beginning type of rhythm pattern because it's fairly easy to play to get your hands going and then you just don't stop. It's like running. Okay, so here's what this particular funk rhythm sounds like. One, two, three, four. Okay, so let's break it down. We're gonna start with an open tone with a couple of ghost tones right after it. So first beat, two, three, four. Then we've got a couple slaps. Tone, touch, touch, slap, slap. Play it with me. Tone, slap, slap. Tone, slap, slap. Okay, then we're going to add another touch and go over to the low drum. Tone, slap, slap. Tone. Tone, slap, slap. Three, four, two, and three, four. Okay, now let's add on to that. We're gonna come straight back over to the conga drum with a few syncopated open tones. One, two, three, four. Um, ba, 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 ba. Tone, slap, slap, tone, 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 slap, slap. Slap, slap, tone, 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 slap, slap. So you see this common theme of the tone, slap, slap. The first part is not so syncopated, it's a little straighter. But after we hit that low drum, immediately two tones in the left hand. That was a slap. and then followed by the two slaps. So let me uh, play it slowly for you with the metronome at 80 beats a minute, and then we'll see if we can double it up. I messed up. It's okay. Double it. So now, that's the funk tone or boogaloo rhythm. Uh, like I said, you can apply that in lots of different musical settings. But here's one that I prepared for you, so let's hear what it sounds like. One, 
two, one, two, three, four. And that is from the How to Play Congas course, which is over at our Patreon site, patreon.com slash Kalani. And I uh, hope you guys like that. Wow, that was crazy music, the play-along music. I forgot about that. I haven't watched this. This, this That video is probably, do I want to say 10 years old? Maybe? Is it almost in middle school? Uh, those Don't those skin-on-skin skin, skin skin Congas sound great? I'm kind of sorry I sold them. I saw, you know, somebody saw me using those on the channel. I blame the channel. And this guy got in touch with me and he's like, I, what would it take to buy those congas? You know, and uh, I love them. They're amazing. But to be honest, you guys, they were, they were just sitting in my studio here. I never took them out, literally never took them on a gig. I think I took them maybe on one gig, but I cherished them so much. It was like having, I felt stuck with them because it's like having a classic car that's it's like perfect shape and you just don't want to drive it, which is ironic, right? So um, I have Congas that I play now that I'm, I don't have to worry about. But uh, those skin on skins, man, amazing. They sound great. I know they're being well taken care of uh, at this point and enjoyed and played. And, you know, that's the important thing. They should be. All right, let's do some uh, clave stuff because I think I believe it was Rebecca asked about claves last time. And that I, we encourage you guys to ask questions because then it comes back in the form of this over here. Where am I? Uh, it comes back in the form of a mini lesson uh, or a topic that we can uh, discuss. So I ha this, by the way, this is right from our Patreon site. There's a whole folder over there that when you sign up, when any patron can access this, uh, I believe. And or at least at the at the minimum now the minimum level like five bucks a month. Uh, but even if you're at the five bucks a month or or courses level private lessons, you can access this. It's just a clave uh, PDF. I grabbed it from a folder and I'm going to go over it right now, real quick. And this is just a few types of the clave rhythms. We have the, I have some of the most popular here, but um, the one at the top it's called three two son clave. That is the one most people are familiar with. So I'm gonna count off and you guys can play it with me. One, two, one, two. Da, ba, 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 One, two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. Okay, so that's in a lot of music. Usually the, the son claves are associated more with salsa music, right? Which came from a style called son. That's why it's called Son. Look it up. That's the dance music, the ballroom music, the nightclub music, the high society music. That is a, you know, it's a, it's got its roots in the Spanish dance music, right? Like the music for parties, which was, I mean, we're talking like 1800s, ni early 1900s. So the music was uh, coming out of the classical Spanish band combined with the music from the uh, the slaves, to be honest, in Cuba, who were from West Africa. So that's where we get this fusion of West African rhythms and drums 
with the Spanish instruments, and we have pianos and trombones and violins and flutes, you know, from the orchestra, and then we have conga drums and bongos and cowbells and scrapers and stuff from the Afro-Cuban instrument or the Cu the African influence, plus the Amerindian, which we call Amerindian, meaning the the native people uh, from the islands, um, and who also contributed, you know, instruments as well. And we end up with uh, amazing music that we call salsa. And, and then um, two, three son clave, the second line, is just the same rhythm, but we're switching the first and second measures. So instead of starting with, we say we start on the three side, right, or the two side, now we're gonna start on the two side. So that is one, two, one, two, rest. Uh, uh, ba, 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 one. D, 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 one. Uh, 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 uh. Now, it's not quite as common, but still, it's out there. It's used. Two, three clave. Really cool. Now, let's look at one. It's got a little hitch to it. This is a rumba clave. We call three, two rumba clave. So, if you look at the first line and the third line, they're pretty much identical except for one note, which in the rumba clave comes a half a beat later on beat four of bar one. So I'll count it really slow. This is the three, two rumba clave. And this is the one that gives some people a little bit of trouble, but you guys can do it. Just go slow and you know, you can take it slow. And, and, and listen to a lot of rumba music as you practice this stuff. Listen to rumba clave. And this would be the folkloric music uh, played mostly just on drums, bells, shakers, and maybe scraper, and then with singing. Uh, so this is not salsa. This is not dance hall music. This is street music and backyard music and party music uh, of the people. Uh, and, you know, just with singing usually. Usually, not exclusively. All right, rumba clave. One, two, one, two. Ba, 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 ba. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, uh, 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 uh. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Cool. Now we're going to drop down a line. Palitos means sticks or little sticks. Baila is stick. Palitos, little stick. I've got one over there. I'll show you later. Uh, the palitos pattern, it just outlines the clave. And I'm bringing this up in here because you'll hear this played, especially in the rumba, rumba wabonko. And it sounds like it's just going taka, 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 taka. But actually the two side, if you look at the second bar, uh, where there's just the two quarter notes in the first part. That's how you know where the two side is. So, daka, ta daka, ta dun, dun, daka, bum, 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 bum. So that's on the two. One, two, let's do it. Fourth line. Daka, ta daka, ta dun, dun, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta, ta ta, ta dun, dun, ta ta. Para, para, da, 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 or record yourself and you do the palitos pattern and the ruma clave or the son clave, you can do it with either one and practice that together. Usually it's more associated with the, the ruma clave, uh, but you could mix and match. Now the last one we're gonna do, Afro-Cuban 6-8, and um, I'm gonna play that what's on there, I'm gonna perform what's on the paper right now, but I wanna, I'm gonna reference the 3-2 ruma clave in a second. So Afro-Cuban, these are the threes with the brackets mean is triplets. And I just wrote it like this because it fits in the 4-4 four, four or cut time bar. Usually we would write it in six. So we wouldn't use the threes, you know, but that it, that's just notation. Notation, you can, you can notate music a number of different ways. It doesn't change the sound, all right? It's just notation. So if that doesn't, if this looks a little weird, that's okay. It's just for the, so it would fit on the same, in the same bars, same page as the other stuff, which is in 4-4 four, four, or cut time, 2-2 two, two, or, you know, 2-2 two, two, or 4-4. Four, four. Anyway, blah, 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 music theory. Uh, here's what it sounds like. One, two, last line. Ba, 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 now, here's the last thing I'm going to leave you with, and this is all stuff that you guys can go practice. We're not spending a lot of time right now. 
And I want to I want to just tip you in a direction that you can go and do your own research and practice and have fun with this these rhythms. Listen to what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the Afro Cuban six eight, and then I'm going to just I'm going to just massage it into the rumba clave. All right, you'll hear. I'm going to go back and forth. So we're going to start off with the Afro Cuban six eight, and I'm just going to I'm going to omit a couple notes, and it's going to turn into three two rumba. All right, subtle. All right, here we go. And you're going to keep the pulse. One two, one two. Beep 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 one more da, da, and then back. Switch. All right. Fun. <laughs> All right. That's fun stuff. So, um, yeah, you guys experiment with that. If you're a patron, you can grab this PDF uh, over there on our site. There's a whole list of um, courses. And then there's a giant folder where I put a lot of the notation and stuff. So that's available to everybody over there. You can grab it anytime. All right, it's time for Reflections of Yanni. And I'm going to share some photos with you. Hey, there's the man. <laughs> there was absolutely no segue there, by the way. So um, what is Yanni drinking there? Never mind. This is backstage. Uh, you could see, oh my God, am I wearing, I'm wearing like muscle pants. Yeah, it's the, you know, this was just the late 80s, early 90s. This was like 91. I had glasses. This is before LASIK. And yes, that is my real hair. People used to ask me that all the time. I don't know what happened to it. It's around here somewhere. All right, enough with the jokes. So there's Yanni. Um, I feel like our hair is competing, but his looks nicer, but mine is higher because I'm taller than he is by a couple inches. Uh, so there. So I win. <laughs> Check it out, you guys. Um, here we go. So this is our, our first set, one of our first stages. I think this is our second year. So this is 92. And, uh, oh, I have that bell tree also. I'm going to break that out one of these days. I got a gong. And these symbols, many of you probably know as uh, orchestral crash cymbals, we call it the, the formal name we use is Piatti, which is the Italian. Uh, Piatti means the two cymbals that you use in the orchestra. And I did use those. I had a set uh, I would use because Yanni's music is orchestral-like. It alludes to orchestral music. So there's a lot of um, crashes like that. And there's nothing like a good set of Piatti. I love it. Uh, and what was fun about this gig is that I was able to use a lot of my skills. You know, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a classically trained musician. I have a degree in music. I played in orchestras. I played in the, you know, wind ensembles and jazz bands and new music ensembles. And I did gigs and timpani and, you know, all that stuff. Um, it's not my focus, but I did it. And I'm glad I did it because it gave me a, a pretty broad spectrum of skills. And actually, that's one of the reasons I think I got this gig with Yanni because he liked the fact that I played orchestral music as well as the hand percussion. All right, now somebody that we didn't see in the last episode, but who is critical to the whole Yanni experience, Miss Karen Briggs. And here's Karen, I love this photo. Uh, so this was kind of early on. Again, uh, probably, yeah, you know, 92, 93, somewhere in there. And there's Karen, just backstage. Karen's amazing. Uh, I've done gigs with her in the last few years, I don't see her a lot, but every once in a while, we might be on a gig together. But she's she's just a, a sweetheart, amazing player. If you guys haven't been following Karen, Karen Briggs, I'm assuming her website is something like karenbriggs.com. I know she's been active, touring, going all over. So follow up with her um, and uh, say hello, you know, tell her I sent you if you want. <laughs> 
Uh, Karen's amazing. And here's one more. Oh, before we... Okay, so here's here's another photo, and we're gonna go back and look at something. Uh, this was an out, obviously like outdoor concert. I think this was this must have been our third year uh, because we're using a pickup orchestra here. And there's Karen. Now the guy uh, right below me, right down, right here. That's Shardad Rohani. He was the conductor. Uh, and he was the conductor at the Live at the Acropolis show also, and he did the duets with Karen on violin. And uh, that's me up up, he, up, there in the corner where the, you can see the gong. That's my setup. Um, I want to go back to this really quick and look what's around my neck, you guys. You see what's hanging around my neck? I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see it. Um, that's my backstage pass. And guess what? I still have it. <laughs> Check it out. I, I've just been, these have just been hanging around, literally. I, I move, I unbox stuff, I, I move my stuff, and I just like, oh yeah, the Yanni passes. The backstage pass. A lot of people would probably give their own hair for this. Um, anyway, that's kind of fun. Actually, I have two. I'll save one for the next time. I got to save something. All right. So that's the reflections of Yanni. If you guys have any questions about that uh, Yanni thing, I know some of you are fans and, uh, you know, let us know. We're going to move on, though, because I have I have polyrhythms to to make. <laughs> so what is a polyrhythm? I'm going to go back over. Um, Oh, one question before we go that Roseanne asked the question, who was on the drum set? That was Charlie Adams. And Charlie was, you know, Yanni's longtime drummer. Charlie was in the band before Yanni was Yanni when he was just in a band. So there was a rock band and Yanni moved from Greece and somehow ended up in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Great town. And that was kind of like his hometown in the U.S., Minneapolis. And so they had a band there. He got together with some other musicians. Uh, Charlie Adams was one of them, drums, and Yanni was playing keyboards. And if you guys want to look, I don't know if it, what's on the internet. I'm assuming everything. The band was called Chameleon, Chameleon, like the animal. And uh, they had a rock band, and it was it was pretty cool. Charlie had Charlie the drummer had one of the first. Um, I don't even want to call it. He 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 had a, this contraption where the dr the entire drum set would not only rotate but it would spin. It was like attached to some sort of forklift crazy machine thing. and and I don't mean it would go like um I think some bands have had rotating drum sets where it just rotates really slow. This thing was like a washing machine. It was like I saw a video of it. It was insane. He had he wore a helmet and the whole drum set is like rotating and spinning and he's playing and everything was bolted down. It's it's actually amazing that he did that. That might explain some of his behavior. <laughs> I jest, I jest. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go check out uh, polyrhythms. And I'm gonna go back to the, to the uh, percussion station. Uh, see you in a second, hang on. Hang on. Here we come, walking down the street. All right. Whoever gets that reference gets a gets a point, um, which is meaningless. But all right, here's the palito little stick. So what was I doing earlier? I, I, I kind of like to foreshadow uh, what we're what we're doing on these live streams because uh, I pick a theme. Today's theme was poly, happy poly days. So a poly rhythm is simply any any uh, combination of beats or grooves or rhythms that are related but that um, imply more than one meter 
uh, more than one tempo, more than one pulse, for example. Let's see what I have in here. Okay, so these are, these fit together, right? Oh, but if I use the other bell, Those are kind of related too, in a different way. So let me back up for a second. The low bell fits right with the congas, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But with the bongos, You can tell it's related, right? But the bongos are playing in a, uh, a triplet feel. So, so they also relate to this bell. I split the bongos, which are like, let me see how I can explain this. The conga pulse is like one, Two, three, and a right? The bongo rhythm I played was basically three beats to the congas every four beats. Then what I did is I treated the bongo rhythm as the quarter note, as the main pulse. That's what this is. All right? So now I've got the bongos, which were relating to the congas, but as a triplet, and then I've got the bell relating to the bongos as if the bongos were a quarter note and the bell is an eighth note. So it's, it's all related, but what do we get? Like, here's the two bell parts. Right? So it sounds kind of crazy, right? It sounds uh, sort of random or weird, but that's the beauty of polyrhythms. Um, now, a couple of the most popular uh, rhythms that I would say polyrhythms, polyrhythmic figures that we play in music, of course, there's three over two. That's very popular. We It's simple, right? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So what you can do is set up maybe a metronome or a loop or find something online that's doing three with two. Sometimes we call it three against two. And you, when you, you could put that as a background and then as you play to it, you pick do I want to relate to the two thing that's happening? Ba, 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 ba. One, two, one, two. It, do I want to make that my focus and kind of where I attach myself, where I'm focusing? Or do I want to relate to the three that's happening? One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Right? And you can do things like, for example, even though we have a three down in the low drum at this particular time, I'm going to phrase that in groups of four. Why? I don't know. Let's see. So first we get it going. One, two, three, one. But what if I said one, two, three, four, 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 ba, ba, scat. Okay, so if I do, I could do like a rock beat on the three while the two's going on over here, and vice versa. You could do, you could turn the two thing into phrasing that in three. It just gets crazy, and it's fun. Uh, another really popular polyrhythm that you can use to practice and base your music on. You can use these for composition, for practicing, for improvisation. 
You can use this idea a lot of different ways. The other really common one is three with four, or four against three, four over three. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one. Now I like to say I can play this rhythm. I can play this rhythm, I can play this rhythm, we can play this rhythm, you can play this rhythm, you can play this rhythm. Here we go, let's go to the overhead. Try this. Here it is slow. One, together, right? And then, left, right. Boom, ba, boom, ba. One, left, right, left, and then right, left. One, left, right, left, right, left. Bum, ba, bum, 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 ba. Yes. How are you guys doing? Are you hanging out? <laughs> so that's the idea with the uh, polyrhythmic music. Let me just go back to the loop for a second. We'll go. We'll come back to this in a little bit. But here's everything I had going. So here was the conga pattern, and then I think I had some bell. And then a bell for the bongo. And then some shaker. Kashishi. That's like glue. So to split the difference. All right. What do you guys think? Is that something you could do? Do you think you could use this idea and practice and play? Uh, another way you can use this idea of polyrhythmic is just playing to some music, right? Let's say somebody's playing a beat. They have a, you know, whatever, any kind of beat. And the way you relate to that is like a three over two or a four over three or a three with four or whatever. You can just relate to something else. You don't have to do both parts yourself. Like if somebody else is doing one part, then you can actually phrase your music as if it's, you know, a polymetric element. Uh, so it gets really exciting. And that's the kind of stuff that master musicians do and master rhythmatists, that is a word. Rhythmatists, uh, people who specialize in rhythm, that's something that we study, we practice, we develop, and then you can use that in, for example, your soloing, your composition, your accompaniment music, you, you don't have to go crazy either and do something that sounds like I have going here, which is a lot of stuff. You can just allude to polyrhythmic figures a little, you know, in your playing. It can be just a little thing that you add in here and there. It doesn't have to be, you know, full on production. But look into it, get your metronome. Maybe if you have, uh, you know, the kind of metronome, maybe it's in your phone or you have a metronome that you can set up like three with two or four with, three or something like that and play with that and get used to it and hear it a lot and practice with it. That's the way you can develop that. All right, we're gonna go back over to the desk. Uh, we've got a few other things in including answering your questions. So let's go. All right, my friends, um, let's do some Q and A. And we've got a few things coming up, uh, announcements that I am excited about. But before we do that, do we have any questions? Wake up, phone. Um, do I use earplugs when playing when playing loud instruments? I do now, and I I try to. And what I did um, even back in high school. Man, I can feel a sneeze coming on. 
<laughs> I'm going to fight it. Uh, what I did back in um, high school, because I liked the way it sounded, is I put on headphones. I put on headphones. Well, it kind of like, kind of like these. Um, they're over ear. Now I didn't have these at the time, but these are great. These are the Vic Firth, like drummer headphones, and they're they're hard plastic. I'm sh I I imagine you can get other versions of these. You can certainly get, as I have, like Harbor Freight sells. Uh, you know, sound uh, protection, but they're not headphones. They're just sound protection. So they're like these, but there's no cord. They're not for music listening. They're just protection. But I recommend this kind of thing. Um, over ear, solid headphones, plastic. These things block out a lot of sound. So these are kind of for drummers because they block out the sound of the drum set. So you can either hear other members of your band if you're, you know, practicing or performing, or you can do what I like to do, which is to play along with music. And when you have, if you're going to play along with music, you don't want to, of course, blast the music so loud that because you're you're hearing your drum set, you know. So if you're just using regular earbuds or something, you're going to end up cranking everything up really loud, right? Which is equally bad. Um, you want to first muff, mute the sound, muffle, lower the sound coming in from the drum set or whatever instrument it is. Could be timbales or maybe even djembes or dune dunes, something, whatever it is, it's loud. And then you can have your the music that you're listening to, you know, at a reasonable volume uh, and not hurt your, your ears. Uh, drummers, uh, you know, we play with a lot of cymbals and it's actually not the drums that do a lot of the hearing damage, it's the cymbals, uh, very loud. Cymbals put out a lot of um, sound pressure and high frequencies, and uh, a lot of drummers, including me, have some high frequency hearing loss because of the the loud uh, cymbals and metallic sounds. So be careful with that stuff. And um, you can use in ear monitors; those are good. You can use earplugs um, under your headphones to just block out, you know, sound that's coming in. I like the headphones that actually do the blocking. So I don't have to use earplugs. The thing I don't like about earplugs is that they mute everything, especially a lot of the highs. I like to hear the music, uh, and I like to hear those highs. And I like to like it to be crisp uh, and get a full spectrum of sound. But uh, if if that's not possible, just use earplugs, and things will be a little muted, you know, like you're underwater or something, and that's okay. You protect your protect your hearing, you guys. Um, by the way, any sound over about 85 decibels for extended periods of time can cause you hearing damage, including riding on an airplane. You know, a lot of airplanes are actually up close to 90 dB, which is kind of loud. Um, I have noise canceling headphones that I travel with always. And not only do they cut down the airplane sound and that, that noise that's constant, uh, but I can listen to music and podcasts and stuff, and it sounds great. So I recommend that. Uh, I've been doing that for years, and I notice a physical difference when I use uh, the noise-canceling earbuds or headphones on a flight because, you guys, and this is a real quick health um, tip. The thing is, um, when, we, when we are, as humans, exposed to loud, continuous sounds, like rumbling, um, g uh, airplane flying, um, anything that's long, think about it, any sound that is loud, that is going on for extended periods of time, as people, that is not good. <laughs> none, of the, none of the things that, that produce loud, <laughs> extended sounds are good for us as humans. I'm talking about evolutionary automatic responses, right? Our nervous system, we just, just the way we are. Because what are those sounds? earthquakes, storms, stampeding animals, uh, I don't know, locust attacks, um, you know, nothing good is is loud and extended for a period of time. All right. So why, why is that relevant? It's relevant because you are going to have a involuntary stress response to the to that situation, if you have a loud, you know, extended sound. So uh, I'm just saying, Protect yourself. Uh, mitigate it with uh, like noise canceling headphones or something like that, because you can't control that. You could think, "Oh, I don't care. It's a loud sound," but your body is re is responding to that, 
in a, a very uh, physical way with releasing, for example, epinephrine or cortisol, um, which are fight or flight uh, hormones and not good for you, um, especially when you're sitting in an airplane seat for 13 hours and you're not actually using the, you know, that, that um, what do they call it? Adrenaline, for example. Adrenaline's not bad, but you got to use it. <laughs> you got to use it up. Otherwise, it's going to hurt you. All right. So let's move on to some other questions. Um, so somebody said, uh, Marte Martilio? What is it? Martello? Sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Um, buying a djembe, would you recommend a Minel 12-inch Alpine? I, I don't know those uh, models exactly. Uh, I would say... A 12 would, if you're an adult, a 12 inch djembe would be about as small as I would go. A 13 would be good. 12 or 13 is okay. Um, I like the, and I'm just going to be a little bit of a djembe snob right now. I, I really like the traditionally made handcrafted instruments that are made by djembe makers and the carvers over there, uh, made in the traditions and also made by the people who originated it. I send a lot of people to Woola Drum, Michael Marcus's company. Also, Drum Skull Drums is really great. There's a lot of good companies out there. I would look at that if, if you're considering buying an instrument that you really want to play seriously and that you'll have for a long time and there'll be a special instrument. Um, but those, when you buy those instruments, you're also supporting the economies uh, over there, uh, which I think is important. So I'm, I'm just going to say that is my number one choice. Um, I do have drums of all types uh, from different places, so it, whatever works for you is fine. Um, Minel drums are good. Um, the Minel, the Toka, some of the LP, um, and some other brands are made in Bali. Most of those are made in Bali uh, at the Drum Factory, and uh, they're made out of a type of wood that is, I want to say it's related to rubber tree, rubber wood, I think. Um, but they're, they're a semi hardwood drum and they're okay. I have, I have some of those drums, uh, and you know, they can be good. So, but try to try them out, try to try the drum out when you buy a drum, if you can, at least, at least a model like the one you're looking at, just so you can get your hands on it and make sure it's right for you. Um, one of the, one of, I'm going to give you another tip right now. If you are going to get a non, you know, West African made drum, um, one of the issues with those drums is that the skins can be very thin just because they have different animals uh, over there and they'll use like water buffalo or something like that. So I would at least recommend swapping out the head when you get it and get a thicker head, like a thick goat skin or even a thin cow hide and have that put on by a professional. And I think you'll be happier with that uh, in the short and long run. All right. Uh, what other, what's a good mic for bongos? Um, a good inexpensive mic for most hand drums is something that's like an SM57, a Shure SM57, or another mic that is like that by any number of the reputable companies. I uh, like Audio Technica. There's uh, Shure. There's um, there's lots of companies that make good dynamic mics. And a dynamic mic is one that you do not need power for. You don't need what's called phantom power. It's a rugged mic. It's the mic that you see on a lot of stages in clubs and, you know, concert halls and, you know, the comedians use and they'll whack it on the, just drop it on the floor and it's fine. Um, they're not that expensive. Those mics are great for drums. Uh, one of the reasons is that they can take a lot of um, volume because they're not powered. Like this mic right here is a, what we call a condenser mic. It uses power. It's got a big diaphragm in there. This one actually has a tube, but it's fragile. It sounds great, but it's not practical for uh, going out and doing gigs and stuff. It's also very sensitive. Uh, condenser mics are very sensitive. So you're going to pick up a lot of other sound. The benefit of having a dynamic mic like an SM57 or 58 is that it, it's very local and you can stick it right up on an instrument, which means you're not going to pick up other stuff as much. It also, those mics have a limited bandwidth, which is fine because congas, bongos, djembe, all the hand percussion stuff is kind of in the middle to lower frequency range. You know, it's kind of like where like the human voice range. Um, 
there's nothing high, you know, really high like metallic, and there's nothing really low uh, like a bass or anything rumbly. So actually, those mics are great for percussion, for drums, because you don't need to pick up those other frequencies. So just get a mic that doesn't do that, and you don't have to worry about it. All right, I hope that answers your question. Um, what else? Do we have any other questions? I, if I didn't answer your question, then uh, let us know right now. And if, if we don't get to it, we can address it next week because we're coming back next week. Um, so we are kind of going to wrap up pretty soon, but don't go away yet because we have a couple events in our event calendar. And if you guys have other questions, that's fine. Just leave them. Um, I will answer them uh, before we go, but I'm going to move on right now. Coming up, a couple things. Uh, our friend Sule Greg Wilson is doing a Kwanzaa 2022 live in Phoenix. If you're down there, check it out uh, at the Musical Instrument Museum, December 11th, sulegregwilson.com. Also, I'm going to just give you the drum circles we had from last week, a couple of resources from Remo Drum Company. Kids Drum Circle Live and then Rhythm Wellness in You is online. I think they have a, an event every week. And, okay, you guys, I'm super excited about this. Our Percussion Hang guest for December. Yay! Miranda Rondo, you guys. Miranda is a friend, and we've actually worked together many times. I've brought her out to my workshops and trainings and we've done a couple gigs together. Wonderful musician, teacher, human. Um, so you want to be part of that. And that is for patrons. So yes, I am pushing you <laughs> to become a patron. It's good for you guys, you know, invest in yourself. But that's for patrons, Sunday, December 18th, 11 a.m. Pacific time. Connect with us over at patreon.com slash Kalani. And uh, you get, uh, you know, contact with me a little more directly, and then you get lessons and stuff over there. All right. So. Sorry, I'm going on and on and on, and there's no, I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. Sorry. Thank you, Roseanne. She's like messaging, messaging me. So I just said a bunch of stuff, you guys, and it was great. You should have heard it. It was amazing. Uh, I think I gave out the secret of life, happiness, abundance, wealth, longevity. All of it was there. So anyway, sorry you missed it. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> sorry. I thought I could get through one show with no technical difficulties. I don't know why that was on me. I guess it's on this slide I have that I set up. And, you know, when you set this stuff up ahead of time, you can set it up for like muted or unmuted or whatever. Um, so it, it was the sound was muted. Sorry. 
Secret of Life, you're just going to have to wait. Or right, come back next week. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right. Thanks, you guys, for being here. I appreciate it. Thanks to Roseanne Musser again for helping out and kind of keeping things going, moderating, uh, funneling me questions over here so I can see them. I can see some of the questions. Everything's a little bit delayed uh, for me. Not, not because it's actually delayed, but just because my brain is delayed a little bit because it's, you know, because I like to be surprised when I arrive in the present moment. So I feel like I'm always moving into the future that way. Um, <laughs> Roseanne, look at your phone. <laughs> I did. Okay. I'm, I'm with you. All right, you guys. Uh, thanks so much. This has been another Tuesday Muse Day. Make sure you check in with us next week. Tell your friends. Thanks to all the patrons, you guys, and especially the uh, business class patrons at the courses level. Really appreciate you guys uh, chipping in. And for those of you who are not patrons, consider joining Invest in yourself uh, and get, you know, sign up for the courses tier if you'd like. There's so many things over there, so many courses, and you get all of them for for the same price. So you might as well uh, learn a bunch of stuff. It's it's the time of year to um, to to be quiet and reflect and do a little hibernating, but also self development. Invest in yourself. Join us over there. Let me know how I can help you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you guys. And I'm going to go back and just start the music again. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time on Tuesday Muse Day. All right. Let's go back over. And here's just a little, here's a little music to, uh, to send you guys out. All right.